Hi, so today I want to talk about some amazing facts about their universe. So the first interesting fact would be that there is no ultimate reference frame to any point in space. We as human beings, uh, we are used to, you know, thinking of places as having some concrete value that you say some city and that city is there, that place is there and always has been there. When, of course, if you think of geological timescales, then the entire crust of the earth keeps uh, moving and molding and shaping into different things. So even in that way of thinking, things don't stand still. Uh, no point in the universe stands still, or rather, there is no way that you could prove that any point in space stands still. The more we have learned, the more we have begun to understand how relative everything is. We all know that the Earth spins, we all know that the Earth circles around the Sun, uh, we know that our solar system is circling the center of our beautiful Milky Way galaxy, we know that our own galaxy is rotating around other galaxies. So there's no single point in space where you can say that this stands still. So that I think is just a really, really interesting idea that actually right now we are moving at, at tremendous speeds and with different speeds uh, relative to what, what kind of point in the universe you want to say. Uh, is your reference point but that's the thing you always need some frame of reference you can you can never have any kind of a position or measurement without saying it's relative to this other thing there is no independent uh, point in space it just doesn't exist in our universe another interesting fact is that we have no idea what happened at the beginning of our universe and no idea what happens at the center of black holes these are times and spaces and places where our best theories just collapse and fail to explain uh, any further what is going on. So in the Big Bang example, we can go to about a billionth of a second after the Big Bang event, uh, but we can't go to the exact moment of the Big Bang because all we get from the equations are just infinities, infinite densities and infinite masses and infinitely small points in space. And now by all logic and common sense, which you can't really rely on when we think about reality, our common sense fails uh, uh, w when looking at the universe. So we can't rely on what makes sense to us because our senses have evolved on this particular planet a really tiny and select slice in scale and in time uh, where we as human beings are. So we just, the universe, it's fair to say the universe doesn't make sense to us. And this becomes apparent when we talk about distances of billions of light years, when we talk about amounts of hundreds of billions of stars in hundreds of billions of galaxies, the brain just sort of gives up uh, because it's not possible to comprehend that. And we, with time scales, this 13.7 or 13.8 billion years uh, that our universe has been existing, at least right now, impossible for the human mind to comprehend. Now, the sad part is that I totally forgot what I was talking about. Um, yeah, yeah, we were, we were talking about infinities in the same way inside black hole. The theory of general relativity predicts that inside the black hole there would be a region of space uh, with infinite density and an infinitely small size. And for now, at least, the scientific community mostly agrees that infinities in nature are impossible, even though our universe could stretch uh, infinitely far and infinitely far in time as well. So it certainly is bizarre, but it's also obvious that the infinities are not the right explanation uh, because the theories break down. But the interesting thing as well is that if we solve the theory of general relativity and quantum mechanics and put them together and really understand what happened at the moment of creation and what happens inside at the center of black holes, that will bring a new wave of discoveries and ways of thinking and we will unlock a lot uh, of, of mysteries of nature. Another interesting fact is that we have no idea if there is any other life in the universe. At the moment, it's estimated that our universe contains, observable universe contains around two trillion galaxies. That's uh, again, an incomprehensible number. Now, there are different ways to look at it. Uh, and as time goes on and the more I learn and the more discoveries are being made, I kind of change, have changed, updated uh, my way of thinking about this a lot. The truth is we have no idea 
uh, for, for our cosmological, uh, just uh, astrophysicist's point of view, uh, we would look at um, just mind-numbing amount of possibilities where life can exist. We know that most stars in our universe likely have planets around them. So many different chances, so many different combinations and billions of years for life to happen. And to say that life, uh, life doesn't happen anywhere else seems ridiculously laughable. But from the other point of view, what a biologist might say is that we still don't know how life starts. So, so we have no idea how difficult it is for life to begin. And from the same point of view of being skeptical about life in our universe, uh, if there was intelligent life in the universe, we could observe it. Uh, we could see signatures, we could pick up on uh, radio waves. Of course, radio waves uh, for uh, advanced civilization might be as primitive as for us, as scribbling on clay tablets or whatever. We could see signs of some megastructures and any civilization who gets advanced enough and wants to colonize the galaxy, they could do it in a relatively short amount of time and billions of years. Uh, and we have looked around quite a lot and we still see no signs of uh, intelligent al alien life, any valid sign in fact. Uh, so that is truly puzzling. Now, going to the other side again, I would say that it's like Imagine being placed, dropped down in a random part of our planet in a house and you wake up and you open the door to this house and you look around and you don't see any life around you immediately. Then you close the door and you're like, well, there's no life on this planet. When we know that our planet is full of rich and different kinds of life. In fact, we discover more and more life that we thought before is, is impossible. Life living in extreme heat, life living in extreme cold, in extreme acidic environments all kinds of stuff that we before thought impossible, even on our own planet, we see the vast range uh, of, of what life is capable of. So that might give some hint into how versatile life is and evolution indeed, when life begins, uh, it, can, it can settle and, and even thrive in many places where we even now currently think uh, is impossible for life to exist. So. We have only opened our eyes and looked outside for a moment. So I think it's a bit, it's like way too early to make any statements that, oh, life is probably unlikely or anything like that. I think it's way, way, way too early. Valid opinions on both sides. Uh, I think, I think it's likely that uh, there is life that we just have not detected. Possibly both bunch of simple life and also advanced civilizations. Also, the universe is really old, it's 13.7 or 8 billion years. Uh, we as humanity, we have been around for only about 0.0007 percentage of the entire age of the universe. Now, 13.7 billion years might sound like a lot, because it is. <laughs> but um, it, it's a funny thing, like stars, let's talk about stars. So. The bigger a star is, the, the faster it burns out. Some huge stars can be about 2000 times bigger than our own sun. And they burn really quickly in a matter of maybe a few few million years, few hundred million years. And they burn quickly because they, they're just big and massive. And the bigger you get, the more and more fuel you burn. And for these massive stars, they burn up all their fuel in the center. And since the star is a balance of two forces, the nuclear explosions going on inside the star uh, pushing outwards and the gravity of the star pushing inwards, a star exists because of the perfect balance of the two, the nuclear stuff going on inside, pressing outside and the gravity trying to collapse everything. So when this uh, nuclear stuff ends, when, when a giant star eats up all the matter in its, in its core and this dies down, the whole star begins to collapse in its center in uh, maybe a fraction of the speed of light, a significant fraction of the speed of light. It collapses in the core of the star, bounces back outside and creates these massive supernovas. So that is fun, but the smaller the star is, the slower it burns. And this is an example of a red dwarf star. And actually most of these red dwarf stars in our universe, the most common stars as well, all of those are only in the infancy of their entire lifetimes. A red dwarf can have a lifespan of 10 trillion years. So most of them have currently existed for about 0.13% of the total age of our universe. It's funny to think that in a way our universe is still an infant. So these are just some facts about the universe that I find fascinating. 
and hopefully you did too. Uh, if you have any thoughts, please share them in the comments. And of course, thank you so much for watching and take care.